Okie dokie. I think we are back. Sorry, let me just check if you can hear me loudly and clearly. If you're here, I'm, I'm here early. Can you believe it? I said the stream was going to start at 11.30. It's 11.30 and the stream has actually started. It must be, it must be an Easter holiday when that happens. Because you know normally now I'm about, normally about an hour late or something. So you know it must be an Easter holiday. Let me just check I can hear myself loudly and clearly. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my God, even the mic is working. This is unbelievable. Could it be magic? Could it be magic, I ask you? Right. The show must go on. All right. The show must be go. Tony, or where are you, Tony? We are waiting for you and your presence here. This is the live calling show. If people want to call in, they can give their opinions. I only have one rule. You're respectful. No personal attacks. Just give your opinion. I will let you talk. It's not really a debate show. I don't really do debates on here. What happens is I shut my mouth and I let you have your say. It's more like a kind of a call-in radio show. Who do you think won this fight tonight? Do you think that Fabio Wardley got lucky and that, you know, he got off the hook a bit with that result against Fraser Clark? Or do you think Fraser Clark was the one who was lucky? Who do you think is the guy who can improve the most for the rematch? We heard Danny Gallagher boxing uh, come on earlier on. He thinks that this is the best Frasier clock that we're ever going to see, right? This is the best Frasier clock can do. This is the best Frasier clock we're going to see. And Fabio Wardley is the one who can improve so much more going into the fight. Another question I'd like to ask is Ben Davison lovers. I'm a big, big fan of Ben Davison, not as a person, but as a coach and in terms of the detail that he brings to boxing, yeah? Ben Davison lovers, you guys are telling me this guy was the second coming. Right, and that Ben Davison is the man who's so good as a coach, yeah. He can help Anthony Joshua beat Alexander Usyk in a rematch. What did you guys think about the way that Fabio Wardley boxed today? Did Fabio Wardley turn you on with his boxing tonight? Did he box in a way that leads you to believe, yes, David Davison is definitely an elite coach? Or is the Fabio Wardley we saw tonight the same Fabio Wardley that we saw against David Adelaide and the same Fabio Wardley that we've seen in pretty much every other fight going, yeah? Uh, and it was what it was. And maybe he's reached a plateau in his career. So if you would like to call in and have your say, we're kind of waiting for Tony right now uh, to come on first. I'm also trying to get in contact with BWTM Sports. I would also love to get in contact with someone like Mickey Elliott. But to be honest, actually, it is about half 11 right now at nighttime in the UK. And Ingram lives in Nigeria. So it is a little bit late right now. So I'm not sure we're going to be getting those guys on. Nevertheless, yeah, the lines are open. StreamYard is back, which means that we have our proper uh, comment system back. It also means as well that we have, yeah, our assortment of meme videos back as well. Um, we had nearly 200 viewers in on the last show. I really, really appreciate that. And for that, I know you guys have been asking me for some updated uh, memes. Here's uh, one of the ones that I'm working on. Give, give this, give this uh, new meme a score out of 10. What do you guys think about this one? It's Saturday night, on my own, glass of rosé, Chinese has been ordered, let's fucking have it! Boss! Johnny, give us the boss. Calm down. There you go. I told you, uh, there's, there's a lot more to work on, there's a lot more. I did promise you guys that I'd bring some more of these memes back, yeah? But uh, I've got quite a few here. <laughs> Beat Haven's giving me a 10 out of 10 for that one. <laughs> Stuart Cobb likes that. Tom Smith's giving me a 1 out of 10. Listen, I thought that was a gold mine one. I've, I've, I've Gune, and I will be doing the, the Manuel Char ones for Gune. Oh, my God. Sat Jassel. We haven't seen this guy in years, man. I, I, Sat, I hope things are doing uh, going, going well in Hong Kong. Right. Let's start getting into your comments, all right, one by one. And we await the, the presence of Tony's Reviews, who is our American Xboxer friend. Who again on this channel we give you insights of people who've actually been in the ring, yeah, not people who haven't been in the ring talking about things going on in the ring. JDM, welcome to the channel. If you'd like to be part of the chat, please subscribe and be part of the chat. There's no super chat money. I'm doing this free of charge. Um, I rely on my job to pay me a wage. Um, um, not idiots on on YouTube. Um, JDM says uh, Grazer, who's Grazer? Landed six more punches than Fabio, uh, hole throwing 10 less in total. I think a, a draw was, oh, I see. So Frazier Clark landed six more punches, 
while throwing 10 less than Fabio, than Fabio Wardley. So I think a draw was fair. Uh, objective incision. Let me just change the, the commentary style here. Oh, let me just change the, the, the style of these bubbles. There we go. Let's just go old school on this. Uh, Wardley is fixed in his ways. Um, so a rematch, a bad idea. Why are you guys trying to get Fabio Wardley killed? Is it because he's light-skinned? Objective incision. We've already had one person say that Fabio Wardley needs to get in a ring with uh, Zhang. And now, objective incision is saying he needs to get in a ring with Bacole. Uh, Bacole would make mitts meat of him. If you want, right, if you think I'm joking, right, I can take a screenshot of that. In fact, if you just give me a sec, you guys think I'm taking the piss, right? What I will do is this, right? We're live on the air right now. I'm live on the air waiting for uh, Tony's reviews to come in. Yeah? I'm actually going to take a screenshot, right? And then you can see this. I'm actually going to take a screenshot of your comment, yeah? And I'm actually going to send this to Billy Nelson live on the air. Press one if you want me to do that. Press one if you want me to send Objective Incisions comment to Billy Nelson live on the air right now. And I'll do it. There you go. There's the screenshot taken. Uh, Tony, Tony will be on in five or ten. Tony, take as much time as you need, my brother. You guys think I'm joking? I've got a direct line to Billy Nelson. He'll respond. You think I'm, think I'm joking around? Here you go. You guys follow me on Twitter, so you guys know that I'm, I'm, I'm about that life. I'm, I'm, I'm really about that boxing life. I told you. Let me send it to Billy Nelson. Hold on a minute, Billy, my friend. Hold on, my friend. If I can spell friend properly, just give me a sec. I'm sending this to Billy Nelson right now, yeah? My friend wants to see Wardley versus Bacole. Okay. Billy, my live chat. There you go. There you go. Done and done. I'll let you know what he says, okay? Just make sure there's no incriminating information in this picture. Done. Done and done. There you go. All done there. There you go, objective decision. I've sent that directly to Billy Nelson. You think I'm taking a piss? Guys, if you follow me on Twitter, you will see there. And here's the proof in the pudding. You can see the phone. Hopefully there's no uh, inc incriminating information here. There's the phone you can see there. Oh, you can't see the resolution very well. But that's the tweet I've sent to Billy Nelson with the screenshot, yeah, to say, Billy, the live chat want to see Wardley versus uh, versus Bacole, right? As soon as Billy Nelson gets back to me on that, I'll let you know. I do I do have a direct line to Billy to DM him, but he doesn't respond to DMs because it's normally me harassing him about bullshit. So he won't respond to my DMs, but he'll respond to me on there. All right, there you go. And Stuart Gold says, tell Billy not to let Bacoli duck. Listen, if Billy wants it, I'll bring his ass on here right now. I, 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 I've told Billy Nelson a million times, anytime he wants to come on this show, he's welcome to. But he don't want to come on because he keeps thinking I'm going to ask him questions about Martin Bacoli and, uh, and sparring stories. But I ain't going to do that. But objective decision. Uh, I'm a man of my words. Yeah, you've asked for Wardley versus Bacoli. I told you, on this channel, we've got people in box who follow us. I sent the message straight to Billy Nelson for you. We, 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 uh, we await the response, yeah? Uh, let's have a look at some, uh, some of these other comments that I've missed out. Sorry, guys. Let's go through here. Uh, Daniel Crawford. Big up Daniel Crawford. He thinks the draw was fair. To be honest with you guys, normally, yeah, when you guys tell me a draw was fair, that's just a cop-out. Normally, I've got, I've got no respect for it. By the way, guys, 106 people here. It's a fresh stream. We've got 100 people in here already. We've got to have Tony call in in a minute and give you his opinion. If you can hit the like button for me, that'd be fantastic. I know all of you hit the like button in the previous stream, but it's a brand new fresh stream that was starting up. So if you can do me a favor, that'd be fantastic. But Daniel Crawford, yeah, saying the draw was a draw was draw was a, a draw was fair. Now, normally, Daniel Crawford, I would accuse you of being full of shit and, and sitting on the fence. But I'll be honest with you, yeah. I ran the poll. The poll had under uh, over a hundred uh, votes, and it was fifty-one percent for Fraser Clark one and forty-eight percent for the Fabio Wardley one. So to be honest with you. You guys are genuinely calling it a draw. And, you know, this, this this is a genuine draw, like what you guys are calling it. Normally on this channel, we have people who don't really want to put their heads up. They come up with some bullshit. Oh, well, it could have gone both ways. Oh, I'm not sure. You guys are telling me, Ultra, this fight was a draw. Man. You, you guys can hardly spit them. 
Uh, Stuart Gold got mad at a draw. Uh, Mark Stanton saying, when you consider Clark was dropped and have a point off of fouls, that's a very good point. He should be happy with a draw. I agree. I don't think you can get away with that, can you? Um, with, with, with what Mark Stanton said there. I think he's bang on there. When you consider that Clark was dropped and had a point taken away for fouls, he should be happy with a draw. I will say, and I love Fabio Wardy to bits, and I want you to press one of you agree with me on this and press two of you disagree. I will say, Fabio Wardy should have had a point deducted as well for hitting with the back of his glove. He did that four fucking times and didn't get a point deducted. And Fraser Clark was calling for him to get a point deducted and it didn't happen. So I may to tell you today, yeah, in the interest of fairness, Fabio Wardy should have had a point deducted, yeah, for hitting Fraser Clark with the back of his glove about four times, right? So we should we should keep it even even and and yeah that that doesn't sit very well with me you know that doesn't sit very well with me that does not sit very well well with me how Fraser Clark had a point deducted and he should have had a point deducted for his low blow but then the referee should have evened it up for me for Fabio for Fabio I mean listen Fabio Wardley literally hitting him with the back of the fucking glove I mean listen it's a fucking British title fight what are we fucking doing here man we're not in Weatherspoons white collar we're not in Weatherspoons fighting for egg and chips with a fucking you know, sausage roll and all that stuff. This is fucking proper boxing we're doing here. Andrew Tockley, good fight. By my God, the level of British boxing has fallen off a cliff. Two very low-level guys. I thought Wardley just nicked it, but a draw was fair. Clark needed eight rounds to win, and he didn't do that. Do you know what, Andrew? I disagree with you, you know. I think that it was very, very high level in terms of heart and guts. And like I said before, it, I, Andrew, I could be completely wrong. It's going to give you my opinion, yeah? Andrew, yeah? I want to give you my opinion, all right? Uh, Billy Nelson's Billy Nelson's got back to you live on the air. <laughs> there you go. Do you, all right, you guys want to see Billy Nelson's response? Yeah, hold on. I'll, I'll get back to you in a sec. Let me just let me just get up Billy Nelson's response on 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 the screen for you guys all to see. I keep telling you I've got the direct line to these guys, but you guys don't believe me, yeah? But the king Billy Nelson, yeah, has graced us. Uh, with his uh, opinion. And just at the time that I'm... Here we go. Excuse me. Now Twitter is working. If I can get... How do I get this up? Do I have to uh, retweet it? Let me retweet it. If I retweet it, it will come up. Hold on. There we go. Let me retweet that. And then if I retweet it, you'll hear directly from the king himself. Here you go. Let me bring this up. Objective incision. You ask the question. Yeah. And here is the answer from the king himself. Don't worry, Tony. Don't rush. It's all good, Tony. Don't rush. It's all good. Let me just get this shit off the screen. Here we go. Billy Nelson's response is, I have Ipswich hating on Martin. Levels to this sport. And Martin is many levels above. There you go. So you heard it there. Objective incision. Don't say I never do nothing for you. You asked the question from Billy Nelson. Billy Nelson gave you the direct response there. He says he had the whole of Ipswich yeah, hating yeah, on Martin Bacoli for what Martin Bacoli would do to Fabio Wardley. And there's levels to this sport. And, but hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Let me, let, me, let me ask him, what about what about Martin versus... Let me, let, me, let, me, let me wind up Billy Nelson quickly. Give me a sec. Let me wind up Billy Nelson. I'm going to ask him, what about Martin versus Fraser Clark? Both on the same stable. There you go. <laughs> Let's see if he takes the bait there. So I've, I've asked Billy. I said, Billy, what about uh, what about Martin McCoy versus Fraser Clark? <laughs> but there you go. They're both they're both on the same stable. <laughs> Let's see if he takes the bait. Depends how many sides he's had at this time of the evening. There you go. Objective incision. There you go. I told you, yeah. We've got the direct line on this channel, bro. You've got the direct line on this channel. Let me tell you, something. I am persona non grata. You can't be seen on this channel, yeah, if you want to have a good relationship with certain promoters, right, and certain organisations. You can't be seen on here because of some of the things we say on this channel. But you'd be surprised who listens, yeah, uh, to what we say. Let me get back to Andrew Toxis. Andrew, I disagree with you on that, but I respect your opinion. Beat Haven. This was a step up for Wardley tonight. Uh, you could see a big difference in the first round. Uh, Aran says, Fabio was more elusive against Adelaide but got jabbed too much and suffered way too much uppercuts that has to be on Ben Davison. But really, that's that's just that's just the that's just like Adelaide was a relative novice, was he not? What do you guys think? Like, this is what I'm saying. Like, Adelaide was a novice compared to Fraser Clark. Like, 
Adelaide, Adelaide was, a, was a decent puncher. But no one was ever really rant, ranting and raving about Adelaide's skills. So I wouldn't say that's on Ben Davison. I would say it's more to the fact that Fabio Wardley stepped it up. Do you guys think that Wardley has found his level tonight? Guys in the chat, let me know. We've got 130 here already, only 40 likes. If it's just a few of you can hit the like button, I'd be great. Do you think Wardley has hit his... Um, has hit his, uh, his, his ceiling. Do you think Wardley's found out what his level is? Because no, no disrespect to Fraser Clark, right? Fraser Clark isn't going to be a world champion. Can, can we agree on that, yeah? Fraser Clark ain't going to be no fucking world champion. Not unless, yeah, there's some kind of mass extinction level event, yeah? A bit like the one that hit the dinosaurs, right? And there's some kind of massive meteor, yeah, that comes down and just happens to wipe out like 90% of the top boxers on the face of the earth, yeah? and then leave, leaves like a few of the shit ones left, right? Unless we have that, let's be honest with you, right? Fraser Clark ain't winning a fucking one title. So it's Fabio Wardley found this level. Uh, let's have a look at this. You guys are... Finished. The bearded Jedi. I don't want to see Clark and Wardley batter each other again. They, they showed us they are both tough as nails. Let them go on and challenge others. What do you guys think about what the bearded Jedi's had to say there? I... I think that's going to be one of the most unpopular comments of the night. And I, I think it makes a lot of sense, what you're saying. But I don't think it's going to be very popular. But there we go. That's, that's a bit better there. But what do you guys think about Billy Jedi's comment there? He said, Wardley and, and Clark have proven enough now. Let them both go on. Listen, I think there's that element that they've both found their level. Like, this is the level that Clark is at. This is the level that Wardley's at. You know, do you, do you have one take out the other? Or do you have them separate and they both go on and make some money? It's up to you guys. Let me know your thoughts on it. Let me go through these these, uh, these comments. Stuart Gould says, tell Billy Nelson not to let Bacoli duck. I've told him a million times, but uh, it is what it is. I'm still waiting on his response on Fraser Clark. I've got a feeling he's tuned in now to the show and he's realised, yeah, that everything he's saying is on the air. So we'll wait and see what he said about that. I'm still waiting for Billy Nelson's response on Bacoli versus Fraser Clark. Jack Plant says, Wardley should fight Clark again. And Bacole and Zhang, uh, Wardley should fight Clark again. Bacole and Zhang, oh my God. But, but, yeah, Bacole and Zhang would absolutely kill Wardley. And there's no shame in that. Bacole and Zhang are world level fighters, right? So it is what it is. We don't want to see anybody get hurt in, in the boxing ring. Uh, Andrew uh, Topley says, Fraser panicked every single time he got hit clean. That doesn't bode well for his future career. Neither of these guys go any further than this level, in my opinion. So Andrew Topley is just harsh. I don't know. Like, the Bucks fizz in Andrew Topley's house at the minute must be flowing, man, because Andrew Topley's just tearing strips out of these guys. What do you think? Do, do you guys agree with Top? If you agree with Andrew Topley's comment, give me a three in the chat if you agree that Fraser Clark panicked every time he got hit, and this is it for Fraser Clark. Like, win, lose, or draw. This is Fraser Clark's moment, isn't it? Like, like Michelle McManus. Do you know what I mean? What was that Michelle McManus? Song? This is my moment. This is my perfect moment with you. Remember, remember Michelle McManus who won um, was it pop stars? McManus. Let me ask Billy. Billy Nelson might know Michelle McManus. They're both from the uh, same neck of the woods, aren't they? Hold on, Michelle McManus, perfect moment. Yeah. Andrew Topley is saying that Fraser Clark needs to come out to the, there you go, it's on the screen now. So Andrew Topley is saying that Fraser Clark needs to come out to this, to this tune for his next walkout one. You know what I mean? Like he's saying that <laughs> Fraser Clark needs to walk out to Michelle McManus. <laughs> Perfect moment. Because <laughs> it ain't going to get any better. Tony, the link's um, pinned to the chat, Tony. But I'll resend it to you anyway, brother. But if you look at the top of the chat, Tony, the link's right there. But here you go. One second. I'm going to send Tony's custom link. There you go. So people are asking in the chat if Michelle McManus is related to Billy Nelson. Gee, you guys are fucking ruthless. Uh, Tony B versus... Who's Tony? Bellew versus Wardley. Jesus fucking Christ. Ace Diamond in the comment section says, I don't want to see an immediate rematch. Wow. So he's agreeing with, with the Bearded Jedi. Both men are warriors. But fights like that take years of your career. Rematch down the line, but not straight away. I, I don't think we'll get the rematch, but wait and see. Uh, Vitality Bristol. It was hard to watch them both. Wow, uh, this is now three of you that are now saying the same thing. Unbelievable. A, a, a compassionate chat. Unbelievable. Normally, uh, guys on the internet be calling for everybody else to, to get, involved in, uh, get involved in these wars. Tony, let me read this and I'll bring you in quickly. 
Um, it was hard to watch them both taking so many big shots while gassing. It's better when there's a big KO in good time, less punishment. Wow. So we've got a bunch of mother Teresa's in the chat. Tony, my friend, unmute yourself. Yo. How are you doing? I can hear you loudly and clearly. Let me just quickly say, Dexter Rico, you are absolutely bang on. Uh, I'd like to apologise to Michelle McManus. Uh, perfect moment is by Marty McCutcheon, a.k.a. Tiffany from EastEnders. Tony, let me start off with the A's, B's and C's of this fight. Who did you have winning this fight, Tony? Well, I had Clark winning the fight. Easily winning the fight. It wasn't even close. Carry on. Okay, you want me to break it down? I thought it was just ABCs, but I can break please. it down. All right, so please, first man. of please, all, absolutely. before I even get into a breakdown, let me go by the rounds that I gave each fighter, okay? So everybody listening can be clear. No problem. And then yeah. we'll break it down. So I gave round one to Clark, round two to Wardley, round three to Clark, round four to Clark, round five and six to Wardley. Then seven through 11, I gave to Clark. And then round 12, I gave to Wardley. Um, you got to understand in round five, Clark got dropped. And in round seven, Clark was clearly winning the round and he got a freaking BS point deduction taken for a low blow that wasn't even really low. And it was like a little pity patter punch at that. So my final score was 114 Clark to 112 Wardley. I had an eight to four rounds. Um, outside of that, this is what I saw. Clark is the much better boxer. He's much more skilled. That triangle guard of Wardley is trash whenever you're fighting a guy who has um, got a tight guard like Clark and he throws straight punches. Tony, Tony, yeah. Tony, let me ask you. I, Tony, yeah. I, don't, I don't know what a triangle guard is. So I don't know what, I genuinely, I don't know what a triangle guard is. You've boxed. Can you just explain to me what you mean by that and what a triangle guard is? Carry on. Uh, yeah, so a triangle guard is, it doesn't matter if you're southpaw or traditional, it's where you have one foot forward, whatever your stance is, you keep your lead hand, your jab hand, down low towards your, your chin, and you're kind of like slanted. You know what? Hold on. Let me put on the shirt and I'll just get a webcam. It'll be easier to show than to tell. Okay. Give me two All right, show, show us. But keep, no, no worries. No worries. Tony's so, to, 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 to actually going to come on the camera and actually, uh, why, why not? Look, it's Easter holidays and, and, and why not? Let's do it. Uh, in the meantime, let me just go through. So you've heard Tony so far. I'll be back in a second. He had Fabio Woodley, yeah? Uh, he had Fraser Clark winning this fight clearly, Okay. So he had Fraser Clark winning this fight, clearly. Um, I'm going to ask him, he, he interestingly, he didn't think, yeah, that Fraser Clark should have been a deducted a point yeah, for the low blow. So please, uh, when Tony gets back and he's finished, I do want to push Tony on that. Because when I saw it on the replay, I have to be honest, yeah, it did look like an absolute uh, uh, nailed on uh, um, um, uh, uh, point deduction for me. But like I said before, Tony has a lot more experience in the ring than I do, yeah? It's because, particularly when it comes to fighting in general, but particularly when it comes to inside fighting. So, Tony, please, please carry on. Well, yeah, I'm just waiting for my uh, webcam program no, below. No problem, no problem. Guard. As far as the low blow goes, whenever um, Wardley or Fabio was against the ropes, you got to understand there was two things going on. One, he was leaning with his waist back against the ropes as he was leaning into the ropes. Two, when Clark threw the little punch, it wasn't even a punch with mean intentions. Like, it barely touched him, and it was dead on the belt line. So, it could, is it low? Yes. I mean, technically it is low, but did that merit a deduction? No. Then when you look at how biased the, the referee was, how many times did Fabio hit him with a backhand? How many times? He even got I said this. I said this. Four times. Four times back in the glove table. Yeah, four times. yeah but, but here's the thing about it, too, is he even warned Fabio, if you do it again, I'm going to take a point. Then he goes on to do it two more times and gets warned again. So then when you also look at the fact that I've never seen this in all the boxing, Fabio had a cut on the bridge of his nose, and whenever Clark was getting off of him, I think it was in the seventh or the eighth round, the ref completely stopped the action to make the doctor come look at him so he could take a breath. I'm not like the, the bias the fix was in, they did not want him to win. Okay, shell. Let's I'm a little sweaty, just was cutting grass, but anyways, triangle guard here. Okay, show me here. So yeah. it's like a okay. triangle, you have this and your turn. 
So that that is yes. a triangle bar. Triangle. Okay. Right hand back here. Okay. You're open. You're open. That's why the uppercut was hitting them so much because your elbows are open. So you're really good to go through. And with the triangle guard, you tend to see fighters who loop shots. And that's what he does. And that's why he was getting caught down the pipe a lot. But what I saw was this. I saw Clark was the much more skilled fighter because early in the fight, Clark was tagging him left and right. Clark looked like he got tired around the end of the fourth round and he was tired through the fifth and the sixth. The problem was Fabio also got tired after the sixth round going into the seventh round because he did a lot of over-exaggerated movement. So when they were both fresh, Clark was beating them. I, no, listen, I, I do. I, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with, with anything of what you're saying at all. Um, let me just ask you something quickly. Yeah, so Tom Smith likes your point about about the triangle card. Let me just uh, start with this, Tony. Let me get onto this. Right. If you're, who do you think's got the most? I think I know what you're going to say, but I'm going to ask you anyway. What do you think Fabio Wardley's ceiling is? Right, going off what you see from him in this fight, and what would you say? Frazier Clark ceiling is. Let's start with. Let's start there. So I will we'll go with it. Let, let me ask you that. Based on what you've seen tonight from both of these fighters, both their biggest and probably toughest fights of their career, what have you learned about Fabio Wardley as a fighter? And what have you learned about Frazier Clark as a fighter in terms of how far they can go? Well, you got one guy who's 29 years old and one dude who's 32. Now at heavyweight, 32 doesn't really mean you're old because they can box till they're 40. But um, I would say that Fabio has a higher higher ceiling, I think. But, I mean, then again, when you think about it, Fabio has a whole lot more fights than Clark does. So, with that being said, there's the age factor. You have one guy who had, what, eight fights coming into the fight, and then Wardley had, what, 16, 17 fights coming into the fight? So... One guy has a lot more experience in the ring than the other guy, but the other guy with more experience is younger to the older guy. So I would always say age is always the biggest factor, and the younger guy has more room to grow. But okay, uh, skill-wise, I don't think Fabio's that good, but he has a lot of heart, and you can't teach that. So... There could be fights to where he's outclassed and he could still win okay. off a of grid alone. So you you that's a intangible that's unaccounted for. So I don't know. I mean, I, I think he's British title title level at the moment, but world, I think he would get beat on the world level at the moment. As far as the ceiling goes, I, I don't know. Like if, he, if you he, he show me more. Go ahead. If if you had your you know, sorry, if you um, had your uh, manager's hat on, right? Let's say you're managing Fabio Wardley, right? Would you advise him to go back and take this rematch with Fraser Clark here? Yeah? No, or not at all. Would you say, go to Saudi Arabia, they're paying guys over there half a million dollars to do, I mean, they're paying Junior Far and Frank Sanchez, yeah? Life changing money to roll around the fucking ring in Saudi Arabia. Me personally, Tony, I would tell Fabio, Fabio Wardley, forget this rematch, yeah? And move on, yeah, as quick as you can. That's my opinion, Tony. What do you think? I, I would say that, yeah. I would say take your gift and run with it. Do not fight him again because in a rematch, I think Clark does better. I don't think Wardley does better. I think Clark does better because he's going to have a better gas tank, and that's the worst thing in the world for Fabio. So take your gift and run. And then on the flip side of the coin, whenever we were talking about the ceiling, I don't think Frazier Clark has enough time to be a world champion. So – even if you were to come back and beat him in the rematch, it's not one of them wins that's going to age well because I don't think Clark will ever make it to that upper echelon. I just think he's too old. Um, and there's a lot of big punchers that are going to hit him because he's not – his defense isn't the best. So I would say why risk it to a guy who's not going to be a future world champion that – you know, when you lose to a really good guy, the loss doesn't look as bad. But when you lose to a guy who racks up multiple losses after you lose to him, then it looks bad. So just run with your gift. Fight a guy like a Hellenius who's been at the top that you could beat easily. Fight people on that level. A Derek Chisora, somebody that you know is going to put up a good fight, but you're more than likely going to beat unless you're just not that good. Okay. That's well, what I would do. See. Uh, guys, let me just – no, 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 no problem. Um, Boxing Classics HQ, it, it, this is true, I have to say. Uh, 
Has anyone else noticed that Tony sounds like a black dude and Arch sounds like a white dude? I agree. I, I, I have to agree with that. That is, that is one of life's great, uh, great, uh, great mysteries, isn't it? Here's what it is. Uh, Beat Haven. Uh, <laughs> but like I said, Tony, you like Caleb Plant. We kind of count you anyway. Um, listen, Beat Haven says, uh, what about Clark? Guys, I'll, I'll try and read your stuff out to Tony because I want to, in previous... In previous episodes, I haven't really done a good good job of getting you guys involved. So if you guys want to make any comments to Tony, we'll answer them right now. Tony, what about Clark spitting his gum shield out multiple times? That's a good point, Tony. Frazier Clark done spat the gum shield about 150 times in this damn fight. No, it was only two times. Hold up. And the last time he did it, I agree with it 100%. The first time he spit out his mouthpiece, he actually hit Famio. So you can't even really count it because he didn't get countered. He just caught him to the body going low and his mouthpiece came out. The second time happened after that referee stopped the fight so Fabio could go to the corner and get a break. And then Fabio came out 100 miles per hour. So I like the fact that he was like, okay, if you're going to cheat me, ref, then I'm going to spit this mouthpiece out and catch my second wind in this round. And he did because whenever he came back after spitting out the mouthpiece, he took back control of the round. So I agreed with it. I liked it. If the ref's going to play you dirty, play dirty back. Did you – I assume, I don't know if you can remember Fabio Wardley versus um, David Adelaide. Fabio Wardley's got quite an interesting background, Tony, because he doesn't, he comes from what we call white collar boxing, which is like, I guess it's sort of like unlicensed, but it's not actually like a real fight. Right? So you fight with 16 ounce gloves and a head guard on, yeah? And it doesn't go on any kind of record. And, you know, it, 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 basically it's a free for all. Anybody can dope and do whatever they want. It's, 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 it's kind of like a soft version of unlicensed boxing, right? And, Fabio Wardley started off as white collar and then he realised he was actually pretty good and then he turned pro quite late. So he doesn't have the sort of the, the traditional background that a lot of fighters have, yeah, where they start boxing at a very, very early age, like five, six, seven, eight, nine, go through the amateurs, junior amateurs, blah, 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 blah all about to turn pro, right? So what I'm trying to get at is this, right? I want to ask you about Fabio Wardley's improvement from the fight with David Adele to the fight with Frazier Clark. Now, obviously, Frazier Clark is a better opponent for me, yeah, than, than David Adele and I think that that showed itself today, yeah. But I'm just asking if you're Ben Davison, because a lot of this is being made recently. You've praised Ben Davison like at length, yeah, for what he appears to have done with Anthony Joshua. Um, do you think that Ben Davis has taken a guy like Fabio Wardley as far as he can go? I just want so it's just interesting to hear your opinion about somebody who's and, and again, he's 29 years old, uh, and came to the sport quite late, right? He doesn't have like a sort of traditional amateur background. Um I didn't see, like, I love Fabio Wardley to bits, but like, I didn't see, like, a massive improvement, yeah, from him uh, compared to what he showed in the daylight fight. So I guess I'm trying to show is, like, at this point, is there much that Ben Davison can do with him? I'm sure he'll think there is. But do you know what I'm trying to say, Tony? Is there much that you can do with Wardley? Because we know Wardley wants to go to world level, right? He wants to go to fringe world level and see what he can do. So, I don't know. What can you do with that with that kind of fire? Is it a case of, well, they, they've, been, they, they've turned to boxing too late. They haven't had that kind of background, this and that. Do you think that's going to hinder them quite, quite, quite a bit in terms of what you can, what you can learn from Davidson and what you can do in the future? If that, if that made any sense, um, Tony. Oh um, yeah. So you got to understand, he just fought Adelaide. That was his last fight. So as far as improvements, it's hard to tell because he's only had the one fight with Clark after that fight. I knew he was going to beat Adelaide because whenever Adelaide tried to jump him at that press conference, I was like, yeah, this is about to get his ass whooped. He can't really fight. Anybody who runs with a pack needs a pack to fight. They can't fight one-on-one. And exactly what I thought would happen would happen when Adelaide needed heart. It fell. It fell through the fucking floor because people like that ain't got no heart. So he got stopped. Um, I, I think Adelaide gets stopped by Clark just as easily as he did. So, I mean, like you said, this is a much harder competition. So even though I felt like he lost, I mean, I still think he did good because his main thing was his gas tank. He was over-exaggerating too many movements. So as he started to slow down, then you saw the skill gap again where Clark was able to tag him again. But while Clark was tired, you know, Fabio was just moving all around Frazier. So, again, I, I think there's a lot of room for improvement. I think – down the stretch of the fight, you saw him make adjustments to where he wasn't looping as much. He was coming with straight shots. And um, that helped him out tenfold because that's why he was getting caught with the uppercuts, with the, the jabs, the straights, because he was throwing too many wild shots. So I feel like they settled him down and he looked better towards the stretch. So, yeah, I think it could get better. 
I just don't think it would be Clark in a rematch if they ran it back immediately. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, while we've got you, I don't want to ramble on about. I just want to ask you why, why you're here. Um, ben Whitaker, just quickly. I know that we're supposed to be talking about Wardley and Clark, and we will get back right. to that in just a second. But why are you here? I just want to ask your opinions on Ben Whitaker because we actually got quite a few comments about Ben Whitaker and people getting upset with his um, with his showboating and things like that. You said Ben Whitaker's trash. Just tell me, what do you see when you see Ben Whitaker? I was going to ask you, do you see a future world champion? The obvious answer is no, but just tell me, like, what are the things that jump out to you, good or bad, right, when you see Ben Whitaker? Well, you got to understand, I'm from America, so I'm from the Muhammad Ali's, the Roy Jones Jr.'s. Like, I don't care nothing about showboat, and I like it. The Adrian Broner's, like, if you can get in there, dance around and embarrass an opponent, go for it. But the problem is the people he's doing it to – or subpar. Like we're talking about guys that probably work construction on, on the weekdays. So like that's that's fighting all. The first time he fought anybody with really a, a plus record, I would consider, who was what seven and one, seven and oh, seven and one, I think, coming into this fight. He didn't look good at all. And his IQ was very low. Like his he he has no boxing IQ because he made zero adjustments in his So fight what do you mean by that? Explain. I hate I hate I hate yeah, okay. Okay, keep, yeah, keep going, yeah. keep going. Because I hate when people use terms like that, IQ, and they never explain. Because you know, you know, people who don't know about boxing, they say like, oh, he got ring IQ and shit. But they, they don't have a fucking clue what ring IQ is. So just explain explain what you mean by that. Explain what you mean by that. So ring IQ is it's like being able to see things that happen in the ring and be able to understand why it's happening. So in other words, let's say every time I try to step to the left of you, I'm gonna call with a left hook and that's being followed by you throwing like a double jab. I step to the left and you hit me with a left hook. So now I'm smart enough to know that if I see a double jab and I step left, I know the left hook's coming because I've been hit by five times. But if you keep getting hit by that left hook after a double jab when you step left, then you know you have no ring IQ. The same thing goes with him. He started running in double jabs, hooks, and he was making the same steps, the same movements. Nothing was changing. He was following the same patterns. He does the same things. And he doesn't adapt. And that's why he started to get caught by a dude who probably is a D-level fighter at best. So this dude would be lucky to win a British world title. Like, he is trash. He's going to get exposed. And, you know, all that playing he does shut down very quickly towards the end of the, the rounds that he just had against that, 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 that dude. I don't even know what his name was. The white dude. Like, he was garbage. Yeah, but yeah, he was still yeah. catching him. <laughs> Catch him, yeah. Do, do, do you think that, just an observation from me, do you think that from what you saw, that Ben Whitaker's a fighter who is a lot more comfortable being the counter puncher than he is having to actually force the fight? Do you think there's there might be something in that and that he kind of looked lost when he was the one who had to sort of press the action and get on the front, get on the front foot? It looked like he was, it looked to me like in that fight, that like the counter puncher was getting counter punched. It looked like he was the one getting counter punched in the fight. Like he wasn't comfortable with that reversal of roles. Do you think there's anything in, the, in that? I think I'm talking shit. No, I think you're talking shit because I've seen him press the action. I've seen him do little dance moves and come forward with jabs and straights and dance around and come back on the attack. Like, yes, he's a good counterpuncher, but he's not really one of those fighters that just stay on the back foot and jab. He'll attack you. He'll jump into the pocket. And he just, he looked bad. Like, the dude just looked bad. And I just, I, with him... And I, I believe he was a silver medalist too. And I just I don't see the skills. Like I do not see any type of skill with that guy. Okay, 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 okay. Um, that's, that's fair enough about that. Uh, let me just quickly see a couple comments. Just give me a sec, Tony. Uh, Tom Smith says I agree with Mark S about rematches. Couldn't uh, uh, believe my ears when I heard Herm was trying to cancel Fury Usyk too. Blah 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 blah. Um, Alby Reynolds says Wardley was always was always going to have an issue where he hits an opponent and they stay standing. The issue was today, and he gasped by round eight. Wardley needs big improvements to process any further. Tony, quite a few of the chat were saying that Wardley came in too heavy and that he came in at 17 stone and he should have come in lighter. You got any comments on that by any chance? If not, it's okay. Just, just thought I'd throw it at you. Like Quite a few people said that they thought that. What if, he looked, okay, 17 it's, stone is converted to what? Yeah, it's relative. Oh, How many pounds? pounds. Yeah, yeah, pounds. What is 17 I'll, I'll, stone? I'll, I'll, 
I will find out right this second. I don't know. I'll have to do a, a Google translation. But if you give me it, because I know whenever I see him weigh in, like all his fights are around like two forty. So if he was in the two forties, that's like his normal weight. I thought. So I don't know what seventeen stone. Two hundred thirty-eight. Huh? Seventeen stone is two thirty-eight. So he's about two forty. So he about he was. So he came in lighter in this fight than he did against Adelaide. Uh, I'll, I'll double check that, but uh, I'm, that's not the impression that I was given by the chat. Because but, I know, uh, I know most of his fights he's around like two forty, high two thirties on all the wins I've seen where, or the articles I've read. You know what I mean? Where they converted over to pounds. I mean, I would have to yeah. Google and look to see what he's weighed in, but I thought he almost always weighs in around two forty. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Tony, uh, do you know what? Just before I get 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 to move on, is there anything else that we haven't discussed recently that we should have discussed? So, like, I'm just trying to think about quickly what's going on while we've got you here. Yeah, all right. Uh, we'll discuss Wardley versus Clark tonight. We'll come back to that with the chat. Chat. I will come back before I leave, and I'll make sure I read all your comments, and we'll finish up here before I go. Um, yeah. But I'm what I want to go. Um, I was just. Say, to I'm, I'm, hold on one second. I'm, don't mean to interject, but I got like, I got to seven sixteen, so that's like five more minutes. Then I got to go. No problem. Absolutely no problem at all. I was going to ask you why you were here then, yeah, quickly. Uh, next fight for Anthony Joshua, quickly while we've got you there. Um, does he wait for the winner of Fury versus Usyk? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> do we get it? <laughs> do, we, do we wait for the winner of Fury versus Usyk? Or do we uh, stay busy in the meantime? And just quickly as well, Dubois versus Hergovic is looking like it's going to be for the IBF. Just give us your quick thoughts on those two things beforehand. If you're actually Joshua, do you stay active or do you wait? And what do you think, what are your initial thoughts about Dubois versus Hergovic for the IBF, which looks very close to being done? Oh, and also, also, Zhang versus Wilder, but we've only got five minutes, but if you can fit that in as well. Zhang for Queensbury, Tony, and Deontay Wilder allegedly is on the verge of signing with Matram. I don't know if you've heard this crap, but that's what people are saying. Wilder is on the verge of signing with Matram. Chat, if you've got any opinions on that as well, I will read those out as well. Tony, go for it. All right, first and foremost, I think Anthony Joshua should fight me next. Um, we're about the same weight, so it'd be a good fight. Jump on the YouTube hype train. You know, you got the Jake Pauls out there, so let me get a payday real fast, Anthony. You can stay busy, and it's no different than fighting a guy like Nugano, except I got more boxing experience. So I throw my name in the hat for Anthony Joshua. I want that payday, Ultra, if I get it because of your platform, I'll give you a percentage. Uh, moving past that, Triple D versus Hergovich, you know. I always look at Triple D like a quitter, but then he beat Cheeseburger, Gerald Miller, right? When he beat Miller, and I liked how he talked shit. Like, I liked how he came up with that song, Cool Daddy. That's his new name. It's not Triple D or Daddy Cool, my bad. So I think his name should be Daniel Daddy Cool Dubois. That should be his new fighting name. But um, I liked how he looked, and I think he could beat Hergovich because I don't think Hergovich is that good. I think Hergovic shells up a lot against hard punchers. So I think right. Triple D but has H a very Hergovic, Hergovic won't disappear, though. When it when times get tough, like you saw in the Zang fight with Hergovic, one thing I do like about him is he can take a shot, you know, and he'll be there. He'll be no, there. No, he'll he take it and he'll still be there. He can take a shot, but his offense shuts down a lot when he starts getting tagged. He, he was fortunate enough that Zang doesn't have a gas tank and Zang ran out of gas, and then he came back on him. But um, what else did we say? Zang Wilder? I think that's a very yeah. good fight. I think it's a crossroads fight. I think if either fighter loses, their career is pretty much done at the top level because you have a 40-year-old who will probably be 41 soon, and then you have a 38-year-old. So both of them lost to Parker. I think if they lose, one of them loses to the other, they're, they're done at the top. Pick so, a name before you go. Pick, just pick one name before you go, and then we'll let you go. Just pick one name. Wilder or Zhang? I'll tell you right now, I've got Zhang in under six rounds. That's my prediction, straight away. Uh, uh, I really want to see Wilder do good, but I just – I have to go with Zhang because judging off of what I've seen from Wilder at the top, he just – he's been beat every time. So I, I got to go with Zhang. I yep. got Wilder. Zang, I got yeah. Wilder getting banged. That's it. Wilder's getting banged by Zang. He's getting banged. It's over. It's over. Do you know what I mean? It's over. It's over, Tony. 
That's what Ayu Saka does, Tony. That's what Ayu Saka does to you, bro. It's over. <laughs> I, I'd like to see him do good. I just don't know if he could beat him. Um, at least Zeng's there to be hit, though. But he's dangerous yeah. early. Um, Very dangerous. I got like 60 seconds left. Any more questions? So, is that it? Uh, let's leave it for there, and then we'll catch up. We'll catch up on a proper show. We'll talk about Matchroom versus Queensborough in the next show, which is going to be a disaster, by the way. But when we get the when we get the five, I mean, while the fight for match and Tony, and it's this Tony, this is a joke. This 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 whole sport is turned into one big money grab, yeah. With taking out of shape, walking Frank Warren and and uh, and uh, Eddie Hearn around on dog leads, it's getting ridiculous now. While they're in a fucking match, he could, while they could sign a million fight contract with match, he ain't no match and fighter. The whole thing's a money grab. But we'll, we'll talk about it in due time, Tony. Okay, it's all cool. All right, all right man. Soon. Appreciate you letting me on. You have a good night. I'll see you soon, brother. I'll see you soon, guys in the chat. There's my main man, yeah, the main man himself. I've been trying to, I keep fucking up this stupid back. I don't know what I've done with this. Like, the fucking um, camera isn't even switched on. I keep messing it up. Hold on. I keep messing up this stupid uh, camera. So... Sorry about that. I thought I unplugged the mic, but I actually unplugged the camera. Right, let me try and change this shitty background one more time, because I'm in a fucking mare with StreamYards at the minute. Right, let's go through your final comments on that. We didn't have Tony for long. It's quite late down here, yeah? So we had to uh, we had to uh, 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 make some uh, adjustments. Let's go through your final comments. I'll give you my final thoughts, and then we'll, we'll call it a day. 145 still in the chat. I'm really, really grateful to have you all here. Um, what in the fuck? Here we go. Hold on. Put this over. Just give me a sec. What in the fuck is going on here? Proper weird, this stuff. Proper weird. What the fuck is going on? Let me change this. Let me just remove this. Hold on. Bosh. And it's still doing that. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, so I have no idea what's going on with the background picture at the minute. It's an absolute nightmare, but I will sort it. In the uh, meantime, uh, that's what it is. Let me get rid of that. Let me. There we go. Right. Sorry about that. And then absolute fucking nightmare and then let me just put anything up other than this yay and then we are done and let me just put this up on the right page come on come on come on come on come on there we go done done and done sorry about that i apologize hey tom the show's not ending yet so don't go anywhere yet all right i will go through the rest of your comments all right so let me get back to this right let me give you my opinions and then we will uh we will call it a uh, a day okay right what would versus zang you know my opinions on this i'm going for zilai zang by knockout in round six all right so let me just check you guys can still hear me on the stream zilai zang by knockout. yes you can okay that's cool so that's so agree with that disagree with that let me give you my opinions on that and then we'll finish off with clock versus wardley again all right zilai zang will knock out deontay wilder inside six rounds because deontay wilder's finished okay and once you take Ayosaka and all that shit you're never the same fighter again so that is uh, it for Dionne Wilder. He's had a, a, a fantastic career in terms of excitement. Yes, we know that Wilder didn't fight the opponents that everybody wanted them to fight in their prime. Yes, I know we can spend all day talking about Wilder's resume. I understand those things, yeah? I'm just talking about this particular fight, Deontay Wilder, yeah, versus um, versus Zilai Zhang. It's a terrible start matchup here yeah, for Zilai Zhang. Zilai Zhang has got everything in the tank here. Yeah? that Deontay Wilder kind of hates. Like, Deontay Wilder, shit against Southpaws. I know what happened against Lewis Ortiz. He lost every single round, yeah, in pretty much both fights, yeah, up until he found a knockout and he found a way out. But he's not going to find out a way out against Eli Zhang. The, the power looks, I have to say, and it's funny because Tony says power is the last thing to leave a heavyweight. But if you look at Deontay Wilder versus Joseph Parker, to me, he looked like a finished fighter. He hit Parker, not flush flush, but he couldn't land the big ball on Parker. And physically, Wilder didn't look the same either. He needs to get on PEDs uh, if he wasn't before. Like, he needs to do what everybody else in Saudi Arabia is doing and get in and get stuck in on his PEDs and start taking steroids like um, like everybody is, uh, like everybody like, like everybody else is because uh, it is, uh, it is um, yeah, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a wrap for him otherwise. So I think that's a terrible, terrible star matchup. You've got a guy like Deontay Wilder who is not active with the jab. So he's going to get dominated with the lead hand by Zhang. And he's not comfortable moving naturally. He's not comfortable punching on the move. Zhang's going to bully him, get lead foot control, 
Zhang's going to shut down what little's left of Unity World is jab, and Zhang is going to find a home for the lead right hand. And in my opinion, Zhang will knock him out inside six rounds. So that is that in terms of that fight. So that's that. Uh, Anthony Joshua, in my opinion, uh, should carry on being active. I've answered that question. Going back to the main event today, which is why you're all here, Fraser Clark versus Fabio Wardley. Before I go through, your, go through some of your comments, I'm just going to try and go to Boxer's page. But after the beef, the two of them are um, now ringside. Um, excuse me, I'm now backstage. I'm just trying to see if I can actually get you the video here. I don't know what that is. Um, isn't Boxer got fucking... Jesus, I th we could have got something a little bit naughty there. So I'm glad I, I didn't do that. Okay, Boxer's got two X's. There you go. We've got it up on the screen. There is Fraser Clark and Fab... In, uh, backstage there. And finally, uh, settling it there. Two Warriors. For me, like I said before... And I'll give and I'll, I'll I'll give you my opinion, and then we'll go for your final fi final final comments. Yeah, Fabio Wardley shouldn't take the rematch with Fraser Clark because it's stupid to take a rematch with Fraser Clark. He'd be getting in the ring, right? Unless they do it in Saudi Arabia for a large amount of money, he'll be doing it. Yeah, in a fight in Britain, he'll be getting KO'd or beaten, uh, and he'll be losing all future income. Does that make sense? Like the, the amount of income and money that he'll be able to make in the future will be yeah dramatically lowered yeah, as a result. Of getting a getting a loss. Remember, remember, these guys aren't at world level. These guys are at British level. So if Fabio Wardley was to take another loss, at, so take a loss at British level next time around in the O2 Arena to Fraser Clark in a rematch, he's gonna have to then work his way back up the ladder into making some Saudi money again. So what I'm saying before is, like I said before, it's not about ducking. I'm, this is what I'm trying to get the point across. It's not about ducking, like these mugs on the internet saying. It's not about ducking. It's not about resumes. It's not about any of that. Yeah, it's about what pays the mortgage, right? And what's going to end up paying the bills to feed the family? And what pays the bills to feed the family, in my opinion, is, yeah, Fabio Wardley moving on and having a fight at fringe world level, all right? And um, Fraser Clark uh, at moving on, yeah, and fighting someone. And Fraser Clark needs to get a move on as well because Fraser Clark has been an amateur for a very, very, uh, a very, very large part of his career. He hasn't got, yeah, a lot of time left. You know, it's funny because Tony said Fraser Clark was 32. Let me just fact check that. Is Fraser Clark really? I thought Fraser Clark nearly forty years old. Let me. Oh, he's thirty-two. So Tony, as, as usual, absolutely bang on. But nevertheless, yeah, it, it is what it is. Uh, so I, I think, yeah, that that has to happen. In terms of what happened tonight, I will say this, and a few people have said it in the chat, uh, and somebody said it in the chat, and I can't find the comment, but I will try to find it. The one positive thing about boxing tonight and what we've seen tonight is, I think, like I said before, the better fights are happening in Saudi Arabia, but boxing is a lot better when it happens in Britain. Press one if you'd agree with me on that very, very quickly. For me, that's how it is. Do you know what I mean? Like The big fights, the best fights happen in Saudi Arabia, but the fights are a lot better when they take place in Britain. I, uh, For me, I just have to agree with that. You know, I'd never... I. I I really do consider myself a boxing purist, yeah? And, you know, I've, I've never seen myself as one of these I care about the atmosphere people. But I have to make that loud and clear here, yeah? The atmosphere in these Saudi fights and some of what's going on is absolutely diabolical, yeah? And it is... I don't care what anybody says. I really do believe, yeah, that it's affecting the fighters. And Frank Warren would agree with me that it affects the fighters because do you remember during COVID when Anthony Yard was getting beaten by Lyndon Arthur? Do you guys remember when Anthony Yard was taking L's to Lyndon Arthur, Yeah. And Frank Warren was saying, right, Frank Warren was coming on camera and saying, well, the reason why Anthony Yard is taking Elster Linden Arthur is because, you know, he had family problems and then, you know, they're fighting in fucking closed arena in COVID and nobody was there. It's like fighting in a fucking broom cupboard and all this stuff. These are all the kinds of things that Frank Warren was saying during COVID. Well, I have to tell you the truth. There ain't that much difference, yeah, in the atmosphere between what's going on in Saudi Arabia yeah, and what's going on, yeah, in some of these COVID fights. Let's be honest with you. So I'm just saying that to, to have a fight night, where you actually have a crowd and see things and hear the crowd roar and hear the crowd roar when big punches are landed and things like that. I'm sorry. Like for me as a viewer, right. I do, I do feel a bit bad about saying this because ultimately it's the fights that matter. Yeah. But I'm just saying, and I think quite a few people are beginning to work this out. Yeah. That we do need to have a certain level of big fights still taking place in Britain, which is maybe the reason why Turkey Allah Sheikh is open to sending some of the money uh, uh, um, um, down uh, to the UK and us having a, a big fight down uh, down in Wembley Stadium. So you can see what a fucking real atmosphere is. Do you know what I mean? It's a shame that Tyson Fury and Usyk won't be fighting uh, in that atmosphere. They'll be fighting in a fucking closet, yeah, uh, in the middle of fucking, uh, you know what, for, 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 for the biggest prize in boxing. But it is what it is. Let's go through some comments, guys. Uh, Mark Stanton says, hopefully Shalom hasn't got a BS contract, but he is desperate for shows. Listen, 
I want to tell you this right now. Well, I'm not going anywhere. For, um, so if you want to stay on, I, I'm going to be here for the next five or 10 minutes, right? There's a few things I want to get off my chest, right? Very, very, very simple, right? For me, in my opinion, Adam Smith, right? I know a lot of people like him, right? And and I'm I'm very, very happy to see that Adam Smith is much better again after he was ill with you know what. And I'm very, very happy that Adam Smith is still alive. And I hope that, you know, if Adam Smith still wants to work in boxing, that you can work in boxing. But I have to be honest with you, right? A lot of the problems that you're seeing at Sky at the minute, in my opinion, are the fault of Adam Smith. And this is what I go back to, yeah, about you've got guys like Adam Smith who don't know anything about boxing. This guy is the reason why boxing on Sky is so fucked up. Press 70 if you agree with me and press 80 if you disagree. But Adam Smith is a big reason. The idiot, when he signed, yeah, that exclusive agreement with Matchroom and got into bed with Matchroom and Matchroom only, that was the end of top level boxing on Sky. Period. I don't care what anybody says. That is one of the stupidest things I've ever seen anybody do. You don't ever, yeah. And if you, you know, I'm not, I don't own a business myself, right? But we all know this, right? Competition is what breeds success, right? When you get two companies, right? If you're, if you're a company, right? And you send out a tender to do some work and you want the cheapest deal. The way to get the cheapest deal is to get two companies competing for work. So if you want to get a plumber to come out here yeah, and fix your toilet, yeah, right? What you do is you get two quotes from two separate plumbers and you play one plumber off the other plumber and try and get a deal. Well, you know, it's going to cost you five million pounds. Well, I've just spoken to plumber A. He can do it for one million. Well, let me think. I'll come back to you. Does that make sense? Competition is what breeds success. Yeah. Adam Smith was a complete fucking idiot. Yeah. And and, and jumped into bed on an exclusive deal with, 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 with Matrim, which gave Matrim fucking no impetus in it. That deal gave Matchroom fuck all impotence. They, there was no competition. They didn't have to compete, yeah, for the Sky deal with any other promoters. They could just walk around and do what they wanted. And if you look at the last year or so of Adam Smith's tenure, where Adam Smith was, was you know, basically... Adam Smith was walking around and Eddie Hearn was, you know, it was it was embarrassing to watch. Adam, Adam Smith was looking, yeah? And I don't want to take the piss because I've been in this situation before, but Adam Smith was looking like, you know, the, um, the husband... And his ex-wife is sleeping with the boss. And the husband's still hanging around hoping that she's going to come. It's 2, it's 2 a.m. in the morning and she ain't come home from work yet. And the ex-husband's still hanging around in the house hoping that the wife's going to come through the door. That's what Adam Smith was doing with Matrim towards the end of that fucking tenuous sky. That's how embarrassing it was because he locked himself into a fucking exclusive agreement that he couldn't get out with. Meanwhile, these idiots were flirting with the zone and taking all their best fighters over to the zone. It was a fucking embarrassment. And... Alan Smith should have had his ass thrown in the bin for that. I'm just going to be honest with you and, and tell the truth. Alan Smith should have had his ass kicked out and thrown in the bin because the guy is absolutely clueless. And I want to make it clear. Again, I'm so happy that he is healthy, right? And that's what we want. I want to see a healthy Alan Smith. I wouldn't wish the illness that Anna Smith had on anybody. But in terms of his performance in that role on Sky, I'm sorry to say it, yeah, but Alan Smith was a shit commentator and he was shit at his job. And he's the one who got Sky involved in this bullshit. And he's the one who brought in these Muppets in Boxer. He's the one who brought in these Muppets in Boxer. This, uh, he's bringing in university students like Ben Shalom, bringing guys out of fucking Bruno or Manchester University or whatever. He's bringing guys fresh out of uni with fuck all experience in the business. And he's fucking telling these guys to... to, to, to he, he wants this guy to jump in a pool with seasoned sharks like fucking Hearn and Warren who have been slitting each other's throats and would slit each other's throats in a blink of a fucking eye if it wasn't for that turkey out of shake. He throwing this uni student, he fucking throwing uni graduates like Ben Shalom into deep waters like fucking with, with the likes of a Warren and a Hearn. And it ain't going to work. What do you guys think about that? Press one, you think I'm right? Press two, you think I'm wrong? Just going to be honest with you. Like, Ben Shalom can't swim with the sharks like that. This ain't an episode of Finding Nemo. This is the fucking boxing game, you mugs. Do you know what I mean? Adam Smith keep thinking it's an episode of Finding Nemo. You know, Ben Ben, ben Shalom is like that fucking goldfish, mate. Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren is like that fucking big, great white shark, mate. <laughs> so Sky are up shit quick, and they're up shit quick because of idiots. Idiots at the top making bullshit decisions. And Adam Smith, I hate to say it, is a great guy. I wish him all the best but he's a fucking idiot. And I'm sorry, that should never be forgotten in terms of how stupid that individual is, right? So let me just make that quite clear about that, yeah? So as a result, Boxing on Sky is absolutely fucking foobard, yeah? They have gone, yeah? They have got the biggest fucking channel in the country. They've got more Premier League rights than, any, you know, from like, is it next year or year after? They've got more Premier League football than ever before on Sky. So you should have more people watching Sky Sports than 
ever before because there's more Premier League matches on Sky than ever before. You know what the zone have got? The zone have got the Women's Champions League. That's the fucking level of depth here at the minute. That's the gap between what Sky Sports are delivering to customers and what the zone are, are, are delivering for customers. Sky Sports are delivering basically 70% of all, of all Premier League football, all right, plus XYZ. OK, and the zone are delivering you women's Champions League football plus a bit of Champions League chess afterwards. They, the zone are a fucking mess. And the zone is still, still seem to put on the more high profile fights. Yeah. In the UK, the fucking boxer are. I just I don't see it at the minute. That's my humble opinion. Chuck says boxers contract is up for renewal next year. Be interesting to see what Sky do. Maybe Smith is planning a return with his new firm. Listen. I keep telling you, Adam Smith is a lovely guy. But he doesn't know anything about boxing. Listen, i am be honest with you, right? Talk about Adam Smith running boxing at a company. If Adam Smith came in my house right now and tried to run my bath, I would have Mrs. Ultra fucking supervise him in case he fucked it up. Okay? Right? i am be honest with you. It's 12.30 in the morning. We're all about to go home. You, you, right? you the, 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 the filter's coming off. You've asked me for my opinion. I'm going to give you my opinion about Anna Smith. I want to make it clear. I'm so glad he's healthy again. But in terms of running the fucking business, if he came in his house right now and said, Ultra, you, you've done a you've done a long day streaming, Ultra. You spent six hours streaming today instead of doing work. Would you like a nice hot bath? I'll run you on Ultra. I'll tell you what. I'll send Mrs. Ultra in there and say, do me a favor. Have a little look at him. Make sure you don't fucking fuck the whole bar from that. Because that guy could fuck up a piece of... That guy could fuck up a cup of coffee. This is a guy who could fucking burn toast. I'm sorry. Yeah. But it just is how it is. All right. We, we all work with these people and we all we all know what this is. And we work with these people every fucking day at work. You know what I'm talking about. And I know what you're talking about. There's always this 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 guy at work in the office. Richard, I know you're there and I know you know what I'm talking about. There's always this one guy or two guys or other people in the office. And you're thinking, how the fuck did, did this motherfucker get a job? You know what I'm talking about. You'd be sitting there thinking, hold on a minute. This motherfucker go through the same interview process that I did. Because this guy's just straight up fucking crazy. Like, this guy's got no fucking brains whatsoever. Like, how the fuck did this guy ever pass the interview? Someone must have done the interview for him. Someone must have... How did the guy... I, I worked with somebody the other day, and I'm a terrible... Pro I worked with someone the other day, right? I had to do a code review. And I'll be honest with you, I, I turned to Mrs. Ultra and I said, as bad as I am, yeah, at programming, and I'm one of the worst programmers in the country, as Richard will tell you, I'm one of the worst programmers in the country, right? I fucking shit you not. I had to read a code of you from, from someone the other day. And I sat and thought here, this can't be right. Like, we must be running some kind of money laundering scam here. Like, we can't really be employing people like this. We can't really be employing, employing people like this. We can't. And this must be some form of DIE at work. It's either DIE, yeah, or DEI, sorry, yeah. It's either DEI or we're running some kind of fucking money laundering scam. Right. And this person really isn't a fucking software developer. And there must be, yeah, some kind of fucking illegal fucking Colombian cartel ring, yeah, that are actually running this company. And now, you know, maybe we don't, maybe we don't write software at all. Maybe this, you know, maybe we're in the matrix. Maybe everything's a mirage. Maybe I'm not really here right now. Maybe I'm not really writing code. You know, maybe I'm Keanu Reeves. Maybe, yeah, our bosses, yeah, are actually some big fucking Colombian cartel, yeah. And actually, what we're doing yeah, is we've got some big fucking cocaine network that is spanning, yeah, from fucking South America down to fucking London because I cannot understand, yeah, any other circumstances on from which we would give this fucking person a job. I do not understand how this person could be employed. We've all been there, haven't we? Yeah, we've all been there. Yeah, Anna Smith's one of those people, right? Simple as that. Uh, Beat Haven says it wouldn't surprise me if Sky dropped boxing. Well, why not? Why not? It's either that or it is what it is, right? Let's move. <laughs> Gary Harrison says 80,000 at Wembley with Adam Smith going off compared to Saudi. It's night and day. Saudi is a bunch of bullshit as well. It's the biggest fights. Absolutely. We're seeing the fights that people want to want, but the rest of it is absolute bullshit. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I've had it up to my fucking ass with these Saudi cars. Now I'm done with it all. Listen, I've told you before, get Fury and Usyk. Yeah. Out now. I'm done with it now. Tyson Fury, I don't care what shape you show up in. I don't care if Tyson Fury shows up, yeah, with one arm on one leg, yeah, doing the river dance, yeah, like Michael fucking Flatley. I don't care. Get your ass in the ring, defend those belts, win the belts, or get beat and done and done. That's all I want to see. Let Anthony Joshua beat you up afterwards, and then that's it. And then we can all let Anthony Joshua be undisputed champion, have a nice day, and hopefully British boxing can actually return to Britain. Because I'm done, done with it. I'm hoping now that what Turkey Alashate is going to do, yeah, I'm hoping that 
this all works out exactly how the Saudis want, yeah? So we get Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury for all the fucking titles, yeah? Anthony Joshua whips out his, you know what, knocks out Tyson Fury in a fucking round. Anthony Joshua sitting in the ring, yeah, with his schlong hanging out, and Eddie Hearn, yeah, and fucking uh, Tokyo Alashik hanging off of it, yeah? Uh, uh, take photos in the ring and then say, congratulations. Tokyo Alashik then turn around and say, guys, that's all, folks. Thanks for, thanks very much. No more money for British boxing. Everybody has to go back and do 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 cards at home. We'll see you at York Hall next week. Yeah, I'll be serving you up Sam Noakes. Yeah, versus fucking Gavin Gwynn, and that's all you're getting because it's enough now. I'm done with it, man. I'm done with the money can buy you everything. I'm done with Eddie Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren pretending to be friends and fucking having cozy dinners together and fucking holding hands. This is bollocks, mate. Fuck all this. It's nonsense. I don't want to be involved in it. I don't want to be a part of it. Yeah, it's simple as that. You know, you guys know me. Yeah. You guys know, and you guys know what I'm about. These two companies hate each other. Stop pretending to like each other, yeah, just for the sake of a quick buck. And then all of a sudden you're doing Matram versus fucking Queensbury cards with Deontay Wilder fighting for Matram. Look, that is the straw that broke the camel's back. Fuck off. Press one if you agree with me and press two if you disagree with me. I'm sorry, but when I hear this shit, Deontay Wilder's going to sign for Matram and fight for Matram versus Queensbury. Fuck off. What are we doing here? I ain't paying for that fucking shit. I can assure you I'll be going around to a friend's house. They won't be seeing a fucking penny of my money for that fucking shit. Take that fucking oil money that you're getting from Aramco because you won't be seeing a fucking penny from me for that fucking shit. Deontay Wilder ain't no fucking matching fire. As long as I have a fucking hole in my ass, all right? Deontay Wilder ain't no fucking matching fire. As long as I have a fucking hole in my ass, mate. It's a load of bollocks, mate. <laughs> it's a fucking load of bollocks. Is, is Billy Nelson still listening to the show? It'd be like Graham Souness, yeah, on a, on a Rangers versus Celtic card, fighting for, fighting for fucking Celtic. Do you know what I mean? Imagine that. Rangers versus Celtic card. Graham Souness, I've signed a deal with Celtic. I'm going to fight. I've just signed a five five match deal with Celtic. I'm going to fight for Celtic against Rangers. But what the fuck are you talking about, man? What are they doing to this sport, man? What are they doing to the sport, man? All over what? A few pound notes. It is what it is. Uh, let's have a look here. Um, let's go through some final comments. You guys, is you? Is it was Lewis Ortiz's birthday, by the way? For those of you who are still joking about Lewis Ortiz's age, it was Lewis Ortiz's birthday recently. Uh, nobody actually said what his birthday. The problem is Lewis Ortiz comes from communist Cuba. He doesn't even know his own age. Do you guys understand that? You guys were making jokes about Lewis Ortiz's age, saying, "Oh, happy birthday to Lewis Ortiz." Oh, it's so funny. Lewis Ortiz doesn't even know his own age. Lewis Ortiz, 80 years old. Lewis Ortiz don't know how old he is because he fucking swam in a shark infested ocean to get across yeah, the fucking border to get into this country so he could actually fucking eat something to get away from communism. Yeah. The same communism. Yeah. That, that will be arriving in this country very, very shortly. Yeah. Uh, from a, from a Keir Starmer government. But that's what you voted for. So that's what you'll be getting. Don't fucking complain. Yeah. When you fucking start queuing up for bread outside your local Tesco's. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, this more, I'm here to warn you now. Do you know what I mean? Those of you who are, you know, living living life on the edge, yeah, in regards to your finances, in a couple of years' time, yeah, when you're fucking queuing up around the stars, yeah, and Angela Rayner is fucking handing out bread for you, yeah, like, and, and, and you be like a pigeon. See those pigeons, yeah? You know what I'm talking about. You see those pigeons when you go park, yeah, and you see people start throwing bread to pigeons. That's what the Labour Party is going to be doing to you guys in a couple of years' time, you know? You guys are going to be pigeons, yeah? Labour Party going to be sitting there, breaking off bread and throwing it to you in the fucking streets, you know? <laughs> That's what you voted for, though, yeah? <laughs> that's what you voted for, so that's what you're getting. <laughs> I, hope you, I hope you save your money. Okay? I hope you save your money. <laughs> because that's what you voted for, so that's what you're going to get. Uh, let's move away from that before I get myself in trouble. <laughs> uh, yeah, and the card as a whole tonight, I mean, pff, you know, it was what it was, wasn't it? I wouldn't call it a glorious card. I don't know what you guys think. I wouldn't call tonight's card a glorious card. I thought the main event was was excellent. And really, like I said before, the main event is all that anybody really cares about, to be honest with you. The main event is all anybody cares about. But I wouldn't say tonight's card was a, was a great card. Um, ben Whitaker is what Ben Whitaker is. I, I'm not going to say no more about Ben Whitaker. Um, I, I don't want the guy coming after me like he came after Andy Clark. Um, look, he's a beast, yeah, but physically he's a beast. Like he's considerably bigger than most of the guys that he's getting in the ring with, right? He's a beast. But I'm just saying, yeah, uh, I'm I'm all Ben Whitaker out. Like, 
I have to be honest and say, like, like I said before, it was light heavyweight. There's no more Kovalevs and Baturbiyevs by the time he goes and goes goes and fights for a world title. So I'm sure he can be a world champion. Like I said before, when somebody can be a world champion or not, you have to think about who is in the division and who's going to be in that division, right, at that time. And uh, like I said before, you've got Baturbiyev and Bivol fighting in Saudi Arabia for XYZ money. And so, look, it is what it is. After that, the belts will all get fractured. And then, like I said before, any, 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 any fucking Tom, Dick and Harry who goes to Tom, Dick and Harry ABC will then be able to, you know, fight for some version of the WBA interim belt. You know, W, what they call it, WBA interim, interim, WBA global. I, I've lost count. I mean, Manuel Char is still a fucking champion after all these years. Yeah? So, look, if you can do it, anybody can fucking do it. It is what it is. Uh, Mark Stanton saying, yeah, good night for Chris Congo. About time Marco was put in place. Absolutely. fucking lutely. Like I said before, like Florian Marco, I wouldn't say it to his face because he's a legit dangerous individual. But like I said, I have to be honest and call it how I see it, you know, with Florian Marco. I'm not saying he's racist, but I'm saying, yeah, going back to when he was fighting on Frank Warren cards, right? We know, yeah, that there's been a little bit of a problem going on, yeah, with some of his fan base and some of the, uh, the chants and things that they've been saying, yeah, to some of the opposition. So I was on that basis, yeah. Not, I'm not saying Florian Mark is racist, but I'm saying on the basis of what I've heard about his fan base, I was very, very happy to see him get taken down the notch in the ring tonight. That's my opinion. Do you know what I mean? And uh, Boxer would have been chomping in the mouth to get him to win as well. So the fact that um, Congo got the decision kind of tells you everything that you um, that you uh, need to know. There you go. Happy birthday, Lewis or Tiz. There you go. No one knows what his birthday is. We've been doing that from before. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, I'm going to leave it there. I just want to say something. Brian Burke made a comment about Bruno Fernandes, yeah? Just want to quickly address... I don't think Brian Burke's here, but I just want to quickly address this comment to Brian Burke, who's making some bullshit excuses about Bruno Fernandes and Man United. Just just in case I pass away tomorrow, yeah, and don't get a chance to address this issue with Manchester United. I just want to quickly do this. Please, please feel free to leave, to leave if you want to. I just want to tell Brian Burke from the bottom of my heart that, Brian, you were wrong. All right, Brian Burke. I just want to tell you from the bottom of my heart that Brian Burke, you were wrong and I was right. It's got nothing to do with fucking Bruno Fernandez. All right, forget Bruno Fernandez. It's to do with this bald headed mug. All right, let me get let me get a picture up on the screen for you, Brian Burke, because I'm going to quickly finish up. Yeah, all right. It's to do with you backing this bald headed mug who went and spent 300 million pounds of the Queen's money on complete utter garbage. Yeah, this egg 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 hegged moron. Yeah, all right. This moron here, who you backed last year on my show, has spent three to four hundred million pounds on complete and utter garbage. I'm just here to tell you that today, that when this guy gets sacked for the Manchester United job, yeah, he's going to absolutely fuck you guys up the ass with no loot because you're going to be left, yeah, with Anthony, who isn't worth a fucking wank, who cost you 90 million. He cost you between what, 60 and 90 million. Anthony isn't worth the Kleenex, yeah, that I used to clean my dick after I've had a wank, okay? That's how shit Anthony is. So you can throw Anthony in the bin, all right? Because Anthony is so shit, you will have problems loaning him out to a club. Like, literally, with the fucking wages this 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 this, this glorified fidget spinner must be on, you will have difficulty loaning him out to a club. So you've lost 90 million on Anthony. Who was the one who bought Anthony? Who was the one who sanctioned him bringing Anthony for 90 million? It was this egg-headed moron right here. As Beat Haven says... You call about, about Jaden Sancho. Jaden Sancho is better than half of these guys that you're playing yet out on the fucking wings, you man. Jaden Sancho is better than half of these guys that you're playing out. Who's more useful to your club right now, Jaden Sancho or Anthony? But you've done forced Jaden Sancho out of the club so you can keep that 90 million pound fidget spinner. This guy is a fucking disaster. Let me also quickly say, Brian, back before I go, is the same guy that forced Cristiano Ronaldo out of the club and left you up front with fucking Rasmus Hoyland. You know, under this Muppet here, who's your top scorer? Is it Scott McTominay? I'm not going to cheat and look it up, but tell me, who's your top scorer this season? Is it Scott McTominay? Fucking hell, you forced Ronaldo out of the club, yeah, so that fucking Scott McTominay could be your top scorer. What happened to £60 million Rasmus Hoyland? Put him on the transfer market today, and you'd be lucky to get half of that £60 million back. Half of the £60 million back. Fucking um, 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 Rasmus Hoyland. I'm just have to give my opinion on that. Good work, bro. We chat on Man United. Yeah, we chat definitely, but anytime, burnout. I watch Man United every single... What? Most weeks, yeah, right. I'm telling the truth about about Rasmus Hoyland. This egghead spent sixty million on Rasmus Hoyland. Put Rasmus Hoyland on the market today and see if you get sixty million pound for him. Put Rasmus Hoyland out on the market today and see who who would pay sixty million for him. That the recruitment has been shocking. That's what I'm going to say to you. And the recruitment has been on ten hog. The man was given four hundred million and he was given carte blanche to buy players. 
Tiro Malassia, no one's ever seen him. As far as I'm concerned, Tiro Malassia might be a fucking... We're talking about the Matrix there. Tiro Malassia might just be a fucking mirage, for all I know. Fucking Tyro Malassia. I know he didn't spend too much money on him. Where's he been? Apparently now he's got mental problems and that no one's ever fucking seen him again. Anthony Shite, Hoyland ain't worth 60 million. Who's the other shut this idiot bought? And let me finish off with Kashimiro, who I told you, by the way, last year, Brian Burke, was a pile of horse manure. I told you, by the way, you guys telling me he's the best... Best player in the fucking Premier League, Casemiro. You paid, yeah, 350 grand a week to a guy who's got no legs. Listen, you could put Casemiro in a fucking wheelchair, okay? And he still wouldn't be able to fucking operate in transition. Right? He, the man has no fucking legs. He's got no fucking speed. You're playing a fucking 3-2-6 in a high block, yeah? With fucking Harry Maguire, Casemiro, Casemiro and Varane all pushing hard up the field. So that when you lose the ball in transition, those two are going to get fucking smoked on the counter-attack because they've got no pace and they leave all that space in behind. These are the ideas, yeah, from this fucking clown, Eric Ten Hag. So there you go, Brian Burke. Thought I'd say that to you. Love to do Bruno Fernandes. I'll tell you what. Give, give give Bruno Fernandes to a Barcelona and a Real Madrid. You'd see a far better player. Uh, Bruno Fernandes' problem, he's, he's surrounded with a load of hot manure in, in, in the middle of that Man United midfield. But that's my opinion, Brian Burke. I love you all to bits and you're more from my channel. Take care of yourselves and each other. Peace out.